Hey friend, did you know that the average millionaire reads one nonfiction book per month? And here's the real question, which books are they reading? Well, today we're cutting through the noise of thousands of financial books out there to bring you the cream of the crop. And so I have distilled 15 years and over 100 books worth of financial wisdom into seven must reads. And these aren't just any books, they're the ones that have profoundly impacted my own journey to true financial freedom. And so by the end of this episode, you're going to have a curated reading list that could be worth millions, right? So great. Aren't you ready? So let's get started. Hey, I am Bob Wadick, author of Simple Money, Rich Life, and you are listening to the Seed Time Money Podcast. And we are in the middle of a 40-week series where we're sharing our 40-week checklist to all the action steps, strategies, and books that we use to go from paycheck to paycheck living to reach our biggest financial goal of giving away a million dollars and living a life of true financial freedom. And so at this point in my life, like I said, I've read about 100, maybe even 110, 120 at this point, financial books over the last 15 years. And so I want to go over seven of them. Uh, I had to whittle it down to seven. And I've talked about this in the past. And my my kind of top list is changing a little bit. I have a new addition to it. Uh, maybe two new additions since I've done something like this last. But anyway, uh, I'm excited to share about these because I just, you know, if you've heard me, if you've been, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, reading our blog for a while, you know that I love books. And I think books are one of the greatest deals in the history of humanity, where you can buy a book from someone that would cost you millions of dollars to meet with. And, you know, so people pay millions of dollars to go meet with Warren Buffett for lunch. (laughs) And, you know, I don't know how many questions you could ask him over a lunch period, but not as much as could be fit in a book of him talking. And so I actually have another book back here where it's all of his, he hasn't written a book, but he's written his shareholder letters and they're all combined into one. And so that's a great read as well, not in this list. But but anyway, my point is you can find the greatest experts in the world to share all of their best wisdom in many cases. They'll pour it into a book and then you can go buy it for $15. And it's just like, it is such an unbelievable deal, but we are inundated with information to the point that none of us realize how great of a deal it is. And it's just commonplace because it's just $15 book, you know? And so the reality is these seven books right here, if read and applied, will absolutely radically change. I don't know if I can say anyone's financial life, but man, they certainly have changed mine uh, in such a dramatic way. And that is the power of a book. And it's a curriculum right here that you could buy for $100 or less, and you could go through it all in just a few months and for the rest of your life, be in a much better financial footing. So anyway, that's my sales pitch for all these books and really financial education as a whole. But uh, some of these authors are Christian authors. Some of these are Christian books and some are not. Um, I am someone who likes to learn from anyone. I listen to music, um, not just from Christians as well. Um, And there are definitely times and seasons where I avoid certain things. Uh, but the point is, I think, or I have experienced that there are certain writers who will tap into biblical principles, not even knowing it, not even being a believer, but sometimes tap into the principle, live it out, see the benefit of it, even without understanding it. Warren Buffett being one of these guys who is on my prayer list, um, because I don't, I don't understand that he's following Jesus, and I would love to see him in heaven. But there's a lot of things that he has tapped into that are biblical principles that he's just benefiting from, and he's not even a believer. And meanwhile, there's so many believers who we have the book, and we are not tapping into them the way that we should be. And uh, and that's part of why Seed Time exists and why we're doing what we're doing, because I believe we should be the ones that the world is running to for financial answers. We should be the ones who are solving the world's biggest problems. So anyway, with all that, Let's get into some of this. I'm going to give you my top seven in no particular order. And the first one, you know, on any book like this, somebody's going to roll their eyes, but it's the Bible. I have to say that. I have to. And it's not just like giving lip service. Like legitimately, it is the source of, like I was just saying, so much of the financial wisdom that is in these seven books right here. Okay. And, you know, and so for me, like I remember... Uh, probably close to 20 years at this point, just discovering that the Bible talked about money, which was mind-blowing to me, that this book, thousands of years old, still has relevant information for us today. 
And I remember just like pouring over the pages of Proverbs and starting to do the proverb a day thing and just going month after month and going through and through and through and just in content and reading it in different translations, you know, for the Proverbs, like certain ones, that doesn't make sense. But then I'd go research it or I'd go back to the, I guess, Hebrew in that case. Uh, and just like try to dig in and understand like, what is this proverb that I don't understand? Like, what's the, what's the actual meaning here that I'm missing? And Anyway, and it's like there, there's so much, so much of a wealth of wisdom for us in the pages of the Bible. And if you're listening to this, I probably don't need to preach too much to the choir on this. But, uh, but I do just, I, I think it's really important to understand this. Yeah, because it's easy to overlook that and just say, all right, well, I just want to get in the practical. Like, give me a modern day book that has the practical stuff. And it's like the Bible has that as well, you know. So I would say a lot of my money beliefs have been shaped by the book of Proverbs and then two, well, a couple different chapters from the New Testament, but I would say 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 uh, are great chapters, Matthew 6, 1 Timothy 6. But anyway, those chapters have been some of the more significant ones that have deeply impacted my thinking and understanding about money, giving, possessions, all that. So that is the number one book. Number two book, is Craig Hill's Five Wealth Secrets that 96% of us don't know. I'm going to just go ahead and read a little section out of maybe each of these uh, that I highlighted, and maybe it'll be interesting to you, maybe not. But uh, anyway, so he said here, uh, and I think this is a story that he's telling, and he says, Then it dawned on me that the difference was that the people in that time had no debt, and thus where they were in control 100% of their own resources. They had only one master, God. Today, most people are in great debt and thus have given control of their resources to many other masters or creditors. Most people are not able to be directed by God in their finances, even if they want to, because they have already designated uh, authority over their resources and become slaves to their multiple other masters. This is the primary reason this biblical pattern of funding buildings in which to congregate does not work today. Anyway, I this idea that so many of us, and this is just one of many nuggets in this book, it's a fantastic book, have given control of our resources over to other masters, and it's hindering our ability to be used by God is, man, that just hit me hard when I read that. And so this is a fantastic book. It's a short read. And basically, it's five main principles that he goes through here, um, but just deep, deep wisdom and insights that honestly are rarely discussed. I've read a lot of Christian financial books, and I feel like he's tapping into things that are just different than a lot of what I've seen. Next on the list is a book called The Treasure Principle by Randy Elkhorn. This one's super famous. It sold probably millions of copies at this point. And it's really short. You can read this thing in probably 45 minutes. And... Anyway, and there's, there's a couple different things in here that stood out to me, but like one one thing that I think Randy hits on so well, he has an understanding of eternity that is really, really rich. And, and he says this, I'm convinced the greatest deterrent to giving is this, the illusion that earth is our home. And that quote right there, I think sums up so much of the body of Christ and how we're all living on earth like this is our home, like this is all there is. But if we truly understand ourselves in light of eternity, understood our possessions, understood the money, resources God has entrusted to us in light of eternity, we would be making very, very different decisions. Um, and that doesn't mean that we wouldn't still be buying groceries, we wouldn't still be buying a house or like or I, I don't even, I don't think that means we'd be living like paupers and giving everything away, but I do think it would fundamentally change the decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day basis, um, both small and large. And, and anyway, I think Randy taps into some good stuff here. So this was a pivotal book for me, impacted me pretty strongly. Uh, and yeah, and so it's a short parable-like book. I mean, I think a lot of it just helps you to kind of see it from an eternal perspective. So it's good. Good book. All right, number four on this list is a book called The Automatic Millionaire by David Bach. This book, I think, has sold a couple million copies as well. Yeah, so this book I have a little bit of a fond affection for because there's one core message in this book, and it's that, and it's something that we talk about all the time, is that financial success is not contingent on your willpower. It's not contingent on your determination. And the truth is 
truly financially successful people don't determine on their willpower. They make things automatic. And he spends the whole book making that point. But and so you're welcome to get the book, but or you can just listen and absorb what I'm saying and take it and run with it because that's the key. How do you make financial success automatic? How do you make the important decisions that you know you need to do by giving, by saving, investing, whatever those things are, how do you make them automatic so they happen so you, it's clockwork, you don't have to think about it. It's not based on you remembering to save money at the end of the month or anything else like that. And so this book just pushed me over the edge because I had heard this for a while in some other books, and but this book, it was finally the thing where it's like, all right, I think I'm going to start making things automatic. And uh, I'm really, really glad that I did because the years just go by and you're either doing the things or you're not. And you get years down the road, and it's like, oh, man, I'm really glad I did that thing, or I wish I would have started 15 years ago, you know? You get to choose. So anyway, so this was a good book. I enjoyed that one a lot. Impacted me pretty heavily. All right, next book. This one I just actually read last year, I believe. Uh, it was really good. This book's called True Riches by John Cortines and Greg Bomber. Uh, Greg actually lives by me and in Nashville here. And we uh, we had him on the podcast uh, maybe six, nine months ago, something like that. So you go back and listen to that podcast episode. It was a really good episode. A lot of good stuff came out of that. Uh, and this book, I really like what Greg and John have touched on with this book in that I think they ask a lot of hard questions that, yeah, and so, like, you need to be ready to read this book and ask yourself some hard questions, because I, I think it's good. Jesus asked hard questions all the time, <laughs> and I think we should be asking ourselves some hard questions. And so, in here, I'll just read a little snippet from this. He says, when our income is lower, we limit our spending to achieve margin, okay? So, if income's lower, like, we need to reduce our spending down so that we have some margin there. You know, or at a bare minimum, we're not racking up credit card debt. Now, when our income is higher, we limit our spending to honor the principle of enough. These two principles will help us follow Christ's plan for contentment in our lives and will slowly but surely help us break free from the habits of coveting. And so there's a lot of really good nuggets in here. I underlined a whole lot of stuff. Uh, just a great, a great book. And both of these guys are super smart and applied that brilliant mind to the Bible and what Jesus really said about money and our hearts and everything else. So uh, this was a great book worth checking out. All right, next book. This one I actually just read not too long ago. And this book is called Retire Before Mom and Dad by Rob Berger. And Rob is actually an old friend. He started a financial blog around the same time that I did, you know, a decade and a half ago or something like that. And so we met many, many years ago and, you know, and see each other at conferences every once in a while and text every once in a while. But, uh, but you know, I, I just finally got around to reading his book that he released a handful of years ago. And I went through it. I'm like, this is so good. It's such a good book. And so it's, it talks about a lot of different facets of personal finance and money management. But just in general, if I had to pick one practical personal finance book that I was going to give my kids and say, do just do this. Like this would probably be the one that would do it. Now it's not, Rob is a believer, uh, but this book I wouldn't say is written from a biblical perspective and not that I disagree with anything he says in there, but, but it's definitely written for a secular audience uh, as well as Automatic Millionaire it would fall into the same boat. But just a lot of Good practical insight. I really like the way Rob thinks. I mean, honestly, it's like he kind of thinks like the way I think about some things, which is why I think I like it. But but anyway, a lot of fresh ideas and revelation and like packaged in really condensed bite-sized pockets. Like it just it's just good. It's a really good book. So that's number six on my list. Number seven on the list, also not a believer as far as I know, but great book nonetheless, The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. Uh and he writes for, I don't know if it's the New York Times or he's a writer at some big money magazine or money newsletter or something. Kind of thought it was New York Times, but some big newspaper. And he's just a fantastic writer who's really good at pulling out interesting, 
I don't know, anecdotes to kind of prove ideas and concepts. Yeah, he's just got a really good understanding of how money affects how we think about life and things like that. And so I'll just read a little bit out of this as well. Uh, oh, this is such an interesting story. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll read you a little bit here. So he was talking about this guy, Rajat Gupta, okay? So anyway, long story short, he starts becoming really successful, okay? With his success came enormous wealth. By 2008, Gupta was reportedly worth $100 million. It's an unfathomable sum amount of money, uh, an unfathomable sum of money to most. A 5% annual return on that money generates almost $600 an hour, 24 hours a day. He could have done anything he wanted in life, okay? And what he wanted, by all accounts, wasn't to be a mere Senta millionaire. Rajat Gupta wanted to be a billionaire, and he wanted it badly, okay? So what happened is Gupta ended up cre uh, committing some sort of fraud, insider trading or something like that, okay? So... Yeah, yeah, something the SEC, SEC claimed that Gupta um, insider trading basically led to $17 million in profit, okay? So Gupta went to prison for insider trading, careers, reputation, irre irrevocably ruined, okay? And then he talks about Bernie Madoff, who was a notorious Ponzi schemer. And, and anyway, so he's talking about both these guys in this situation where they're both really, really wealthy, and yet they do these things for money that just doesn't make any sense. So Bernie Madoff's legitimate, non-fraudulent business was by any measure a huge success and made him hugely and legitimately wealthy, and yet the fraud. The question we should ask of both Gupta and Madoff is why someone worth hundreds of millions of dollars would be so desperate for more money that they risked everything in pursuit of even more. Okay, and so he goes, he says, a crime committed by those living on the edge of survival is one thing. So a Nigerian scam artist once told the New York Times that he felt guilty for hurting others, but, quote, poverty will make you, for, uh, will, poverty will not make you feel the pain, help you forget the pain, basically. But what Gupta and Madoff did was something different. They already had everything unimaginable wealth, prestige, power, and freedom, and they threw it all away because they wanted more. They had no sense of enough. And so I think that's a question that, you know, all of us, you know, probably not as wealthy as the two of them, but there is something there about having a sense of enough, okay? And so he's got this Warren Buffett quote in here where he says, um, to make money they didn't have and didn't need, they risked what they did have and did need. And that's foolish. It's just plain foolish. If you risk something that is important to you for something that's unimportant to you, it just doesn't make any sense. There's no reason to risk what you have and need for what you don't have and don't need. Anyway, so this book is just full of things like that and a lot of great writing and great insights um, about money and how we think about it and all kinds of stuff like that. So anyway... So these are the seven books that, again, I would put in my top seven that have deeply impacted my thinking. Now, uh, I know a lot of you have read our book, Simple Money, Rich Life. Um, and if you are one of those people where you're like, all right, I'm not going to read seven books, um, I would recommend our book to you because I actually rolled up a lot of the best lessons that I learned in these books into our book, Simple Money, Rich Life. And so if you want a little bit of a one-stop shop that includes kind of the best of some of what I got from these books, you can check that out as well. I do think you're going to benefit from reading all seven of them. I would recommend that you do that. But again, I know some people, it's like, I am, I read one book a year and that's it. And it's like, all right, let's do that if that's going to do it. Uh, all right. Now, one thing I want to do that I think, well, here's what we're going to do. I want to give this curriculum of books away to to one of you listening, and maybe it's you. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the next seven days, uh, I want you to send me a screenshot of a review that you have left for this podcast, whether that's on iTunes or Spotify, or wherever you leave reviews, uh, and you can have already left one in the past. If you already left one in the past, go find it, take a screenshot. Or if you haven't, go do that, then take a screenshot and just send it to me, bob at seedtime.com, in the next seven days from the time this is published. And we're going to pick a winner 
uh, and send you a copy of all of these books, okay? We're gonna send them on over, and get them mailed out to you, and then you'll have that curriculum and go through it, report back to me in six months, and let me know what you learned. And so anyway, so yeah, just do that. Send me an email, bob at ctime.com. And I will say a lot of times, it's just human nature, but a lot of people don't take action. So like, this is gonna be one of those things where it's like, I don't think there are gonna be tons of people who are actually gonna do this. So the odds of winning this could be pretty good. I'll just say that. Anyway, so send me a screenshot of your review, honest review, don't, you know, yeah. We just want honest reviews, <laughs> I'll just leave that. Honest review, it doesn't matter what how many stars you put, I just want honest feedback and what you love about the show or whatever else. Okay, and your action items for today, grab one of these books, we'll have the links down in the show notes and get going, start reading and report back. I'd love to hear what you learned, what you enjoyed from it. But that's all for today. Be blessed, be blessing. We'll see you in the next one. I thought it was the best combination of personal finance and the Christian faith that I've ever read. This is what James said after he read our book, Simple Money, Rich Life. And did you know that you can get a copy of this award-winning book for free? You can get it on Amazon, but we so believe that the church needs this message that if you can cover shipping, we'd love to cover the cost of the book and send you a free copy. All you need to do is go to seedtime.com slash free to get yours.